Hi there guys. I'm out at the range today and I'm going to be trying out some of this Agia Sniper Subsonic 60 grain 22 ammunition. And this is a very uh, unusual looking round if you've never seen this stuff before. It's basically a 22 short cartridge case with a very long 60 grain bullet stuffed into it. So it is of course, as the name would imply, subsonic. So we're going to run some of this through my Norinco NS522 here. We're going to try it out at uh, 25, 50, 75, and 90 yards. And we'll try for accuracy, of course, at those distances. And uh, we'll also run it over the chronograph to see what kind of velocity we get out of this particular rifle. These rounds feature just a wax lubricated bullet. No plating on them or anything like that. Of course, at the low speeds involved, that should be just fine. They looked a little bit uh, strange when loaded into the box magazine of this Norinco, but uh, let's see how they function. All right, this is the Agia 60 grain at 25 yards. These printed boxes are one inch squares. So you can see we're inside of an inch there, center to center. The horizontal dispersion appears to be about, uh, about a half inch. And vertically, we're looking at probably seven eighths of an inch. So not too bad considering the uh, rather excessive bullet weight. Here are 10 rounds of the Gila Sniper Subsonic, and this is at 50 yards. So let's see how big this works out to. Looks like uh, an inch and a quarter for those two, which appear to be the furthest apart. And if we discount that one, the other nine appear to be into one inch. So an inch to an inch and a quarter at 50 yards, which is much better than I thought this ammo would do considering the 50% uh, over standard bullet weight that it has and the slow rate of twist of the 22 long rifle barrel. So we've got the Agia Subsonics here and the Norinco NS522. This is uh, with the chronograph about eight feet in front of the muzzle. There's our low, 861, high, 942, this is a pretty big extreme spread, average of 908, there's our extreme spread, standard deviation, about 25, and here are the individual 10 shots. I've been picking up the bullets in flight as they go down, so uh, we'll set the camera up here and see if uh, we can capture one of the bullets going down into the target. I apologize for all the background noise. There's a 
bunch of farm machinery working in a nearby field. So here we are at the 75 yard mark. Once again, 10 rounds of the Agia 60 grain. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This one's kind of interesting. There's a black mark here that would suggest that perhaps the bullet is not uh, entirely stable since we've got a little bit bigger mark than usual. So perhaps the stability is starting to run out on these. That one's a little bit uh, bigger than a round hole as well. So anyway, the extreme spread between uh, all of these appears to be right at the two and a half inch mark. And if we discount that one, the rest of them come in at, uh, appears to be about an inch and three quarters for, for these nine. So it looks like the uh, accuracy may start to fall apart a little bit after 50 yards. So we've only got five rounds left, so we're going to move back uh, a little further here and uh, try the last five rounds. Alright, for the last five rounds I got the camera set up uh, considerably further away than normal probably about uh, 15 yards away from the shooting bench. And this is just an attempt to see how the uh, rifle sounds from a little bit further back. So here's our final five rounds of the day. Unfortunately, I don't have enough ammo to shoot a 10 round group. Uh, this is at 90 yards, and the extreme spread for these five is right about the two inch mark. And interestingly, the drop is uh, fairly significant with this stuff, considering the rather uh, low speed that it obtains. Of course, it's a heavy bullet, but it's going at a slow speed. So if we pull back on this target a bit, we can, uh, have a look at a couple of things here. This is the group, as I said, at 90 yards. This is the hold point at uh, 90 yards. So we've got a fair bit of drop. Uh, let's see, about six and a half inches of drop for that, and that's over a 50 yard zero. And our 75 yard group, which was here, the aiming point for that was up here. And we've got about four inches of drop at 75 yards. And of course this was zeroed in at uh, 50 yards, so they were right of the money at 50 yards. And if we look back at our 25 yard group here, there's the aiming point and it prints about an inch high. Well, we're all uh, finished shooting this Agia 22 60 grain ammo, so I guess it's time for some conclusions. Found this ammunition to be much more accurate than I had expected considering the heavy bullet and the standard 1 in 16 inch twist rifling rate and uh, the accuracy was quite uh, respectable at 25 and 50 yards and it wasn't too bad at 75 and 90 either. The main problem would be the amount of drop uh, that you would experience in field conditions if you're shooting a game animal with this stuff. You would have to know the distance pretty precisely to be able to put the bullet on the target once you get past about 50 yards. So I would say this is a 50 yard and uh, under type of round, which most 22 ammunition is anyway. So if you stick within those limitations, you should be able to hit what you're shooting at. And the 60 grain bullet, despite its uh, lower velocity, should hit with a bit of thump because it's got the extra bullet weight. Um, the ammunition is definitely subsonic, and the re muzzle report is quite uh, mild. Um, this particular rifle didn't like to eject the uh, short 22 cases. Um, it's not the best rifle for ejection anyway, but it did suffer a bit more with the stuff than it did with standard 22 long rifle, but uh, remains to be seen how it would do in other rifles. Anyway, an interesting little round, and uh, thanks for joining me today to have a look at it.